mighty. You made the birds, you made the bees, you made the rivers, you made the seas. Now I know you are mighty. You made the lilies of all the fields, you made the mountains, you made the hills. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Good morning. Welcome to Morning Cup of Jesus. I'm your host, Minister Edward Broom. Without further ado, let's get right into it. <clears throat> Father God in heaven, it's in Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you. God, we thank you that you never leave us and you never forsake us, God. We thank you, God, for putting us to sleep last night and waking us up this morning, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for opportunities that you give us, Lord God, to, to hear your word, to speak your word, to seek your word, and to spread your word, Lord God. I pray, God, that you speak what you want us to hear this morning, God, and I pray that you reveal and show to us, Lord, what you want us to see. Move all pride, ego, boasting, bragging, puffed upness out of the way, Lord God, so the people hear and see you. None of me, but all of you, God. And I pray, Lord, you will use me this morning for your will, for your glory, at your discretion, and I'm even at your disposal, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Today's scripture is <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 30 verses 20, 19 through 19 through 26. <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 30 verses 19 through 26. <clears throat> For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. You shall weep no more. He will be very gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. And though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet your teachers will not be moved into a corner anymore. But your eyes shall see your teachers. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. You will also defile the covering of your images of silver and the ornament of your molded images of gold. You will throw them away as an unclean thing. You will say to them, get away. Then he will give you the rain for your seed in, in which you will sow the ground and the bread of, in, of increase of the earth. It will be fatful and plentiful. In that day, your cattle will feed in large pastures. Likewise, the oxen and the young donkeys that work the ground will eat cured fodder which has been went on with the shovel and fan. There will be on every mountain and on every high hill rivers and streams of waters in the day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. Moreover, the light of the moon will be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun will be sevenfold, <clears throat> as the light of seven days. And the day that the Lord binds up the bruise of his people and heals the stroke of their wound. God bless the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy word. Amen. <clears throat> Let's check out this stuff. I don't want to do too much going on here. All right. Um, When you cry out to God, he will hear you and answer you. He will hear you and answer you. It might not be the um exact answer. It might not be the exact answer that you want to hear. 
but you will get an answer if you are open to what God says. If you're open to what the Lord says and you're crying out to him, uh, you're going to hear you're going to hear him tell you something. Now, a lot of times we think God's not listening or God doesn't hear us or our prayers are in vain if we don't get exactly what we're asking for. See, God knows what's best for us. And you and I mean, some things you can't ask for because they may not be uh in line with the Lord's will. You see what I'm saying? Well you ask, we know that uh but believers, we know that if we pray, God hears us. And we know that since God hears us, we already have the things that we have asked for according to his will. Uh, many people seek God for answers but they block out what he says. Then they wonder why God is not talking to them. But the fact of the matter is God is talking to them, but they're just not listening. <clears throat> As you can see, this passage is filled with things that God says he's going to do for his people, for his children. And, um, the, and God has so many good things in store for his children, but his children sometimes miss out because they either idolize those things or they don't appreciate God for providing those things. Now, let me pause right there for a second. Idolizing things that God gives you, uh, I mean, it, 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 you know how you idolize things. You know how God bless you with a, a, a new car. You know what I'm saying? And uh, you, that car is the, is, the, is the joy of your life. <laughs> that car is the joy of your life. And if something happens to it, it's the bane of your existence. You've made that into an idol. God should be the joy of your life. And when something happens to you, if you get separated from God, or you feel like God's not there, or God has left, you feel like God has left you, that should be the bane of your existence. You should seek God saying, Lord, if you left me, I don't have a purpose. Not once I lose my car, I don't have a purpose. Or once I lose this job, I don't have a purpose. Or once I lose this loved one, I don't have a purpose. See, God even blesses us with children and parents and family and 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 spouses and friends and relatives and loved ones and stuff but still those people things cannot be the the joy of your life you gotta appreciate god for giving you those things and those people you know what i'm saying so when those people are uh, when those people are extracted from your or removed from your life by god because the devil ain't got no power. He the prince of this world, but everything the devil does, he got to run through God first. The devil is God's devil. He got to go through him first. Everybody know the book of Job. He did all this terrible stuff to Job, but God had to allow him to do it. Now, if you asking God, Lord, show me what's going on. Why this is happening? All right, that's cool. Well, you say, God, you ain't got no, uh, why are you doing this to me, God? You ain't got no, uh, reason to do this to me you're in the wrong all right but yeah when uh when god removes something or extracts something from our life or person from our life that we cannot allow that thing or that person being removed from our life to cause us to go into a a, a, a deep depression or a um a state of of of, of, of not having a purpose or, or not wanting to be here you know what i'm saying if you living for a person you're living for the wrong thing. You're living for the wrong reason, if that's what you're living for. So that's why I say uh, God blesses us with things, but it's but the problem is people idolize those things. That's that's a it's a huge problem. Um, um, the second uh, the second uh thing is uh people don't appreciate God for giving them those things. People don't people don't uh, people don't acknowledge that God is the one who is giving them that person, that thing, that position. God is the one who has given them that, so we have to uh, glorify God in it. It's not by your own power. Now, we are saved by grace through faith that God has given us. That's saving grace. The other thing God shows us, other types of favor and, and grace and gifts and stuff that God gives us, we still need to acknowledge those things as well. We still can't allow those things to uh, to be... Um, to put us in a mindset where 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 we where we take our mind off of God, we take our eyes off of God. Um, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above. 
everything. James uh, chapter 1, verse 17. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father. Every good and perfect gift. See, some things are not gifts. Some things are, uh, are not gifts from God. See, there is, some things are not gifts at all, but some things are gifts from God. Are not gifts from God. Uh, you know, but um, I, I can, we can consider, we can consider all things as gifts because we have a different um, perspective of what good is. See, uh, we might think that. Uh, uh, find I don't know, find two hundred, find a hundred dollars on the ground. Hey, find a hundred dollar bill on the ground might be a good gift. That might be that probably is a good gift. I probably think that's a good gift too. But uh, depending on what you do with it, see what I'm saying? You're like, oh man, you know you get you get something, then you say, man, I wish I hadn't even got that. I hadn't even done. That. I use a money as an example. They're probably a bad example to use. I to use something else like when you do get a, you can say you get a um, somebody, you get a motorcycle or something. And you end up hurting somebody that you love or hurting yourself. And you say, man, I wish I had never gotten this motorcycle. So was that a good gift from God? Or was that a gift from the enemy? Because he was trying to get you off course. He's trying to have you hurt so you can't do something that the Lord wants you to do. Or he was trying to have you to hurt somebody else so you couldn't do something that the Lord wants you to do. And you had to be in the wrong when you hurt somebody. Or you could have been in the wrong. You could have been drinking on your motorcycle. Or you could have been just driving normally. And all of a sudden, uh, you just uh, wasn't paying attention and something happened. So what we consider gifts and what God considers gifts might not be the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Also, what we consider good good gifts, God may not have the same view as what good is, according to our, according to our eyes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, but uh, when we take our, when we, when we take, when we focus on a gift, first of all, when we focus on a gift instead of the giver, that's the problem. See, um, God, uh, He is God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Uh, that's uh, Hebrews chapter eleven. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Now, what does it mean to diligently seek God? That means to chase after Him and go after Him. But if you chasing and going after God because you want a thing. Or is something, something, you know, you're trying to acquire something besides God Himself, that may be a problem. You know what I'm saying? You're still idolizing these things or these people or whatever it is that you're chasing after God for. Some people are start going to church, you know, getting to church. They'd be like, I'm going to go to church until I'm, I'm, I'm the Lord, and then, because the Lord going to give me a husband or a wife, you know what I'm saying? And they get up in there and find who they're looking for, and then they done going to church. So you weren't seeking God, you was you weren't seeking God's face. You were seeking God's gifts or God's His presence, not His presence. Uh, when we take our mind off the gift, whether it's a person, whether it's things, whether it's position, when we take our minds off the gifts and shift our focus to the giver, we realize how blessed we are already are. I, as I was praying this morning before I read the scripture. I said, uh, I said, Lord, thank you, God. I don't know what run through my head. I said, God, thank you for all the things. And then somehow I think about things. I said, God, even though I don't really care about the things, God, forgive me for saying, I don't, the things are not that great, Lord God, but thank you for these things you've given me. And it just so happened that there was a spirit putting on my heart because this is what the scripture was. The scripture was already ready before I woke up this morning. I didn't come up with the scripture. It was already in my app. Yeah, I'll tell you that. So the reason why that was on my heart, the spirit put it on my heart about the things and, and I'm not being crazy idolizing the things is because that's exactly what the verse is about. Uh, when we take our mind and our attention and our focus off the gift and shift our mind and our focus and our attention towards the person giving us the gift, we realize that we're already blessed. When 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 God knows that we are chasing after his presence, wanting to be close to him. He doesn't mind giving us presents. You hear that? I'm going to say it again. When God knows that we are chasing after his presence, he doesn't mind giving us presents. I hope that resonates with you. I hope that this, this little uh, lesson, this little sermon this morning, whatever you want to call it, causes you to seek God's presence 
and not his presence. Seek God's face and not his hand. He has a whole lot for his children. But sometimes his children miss out because they trying to get what he has without trying to get him. Seek God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things will be given unto you. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. Forgive me, God, if I didn't say what everything you wanted me to say, Lord. Forgive me, God, if I didn't if I didn't hear clearly what you were trying to uh, uh, relate to your people, Lord. Help them to understand it, God. Help them to receive it. Those who are watching and hearing later on today, Lord. God, whatever your will is, we pray that your will be done, God. Your will, God, not my will, not our will. Keep us safe as we go in and coming, Lord, and watch over us, Lord, God, and whatever we're doing, order our steps in your word, God, and don't let any iniquity have dominion over us. And, Lord, lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake, Father. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. All right, that's it. That's it for Morning Cup of Jesus with me, Edward Broom. Hey, if the Lord is willing, I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning about the same time. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. See